So I saw this post on Twitter. You know how Korea has a bunch of social problems that we talk about from time to time? I don't think I've ever talked about Korea in a positive context, really, because, like, so much is going wrong over there, you know? Here, look at this. Over 150 elementary schools have no first graders in, in, in South Korea. A total of 157 elementary schools in South Korea ha do not have any first graders set to enroll in March, the Ministry of Education said Monday, as a record low number of new students is expected for the upcoming year. Uh, they're not having kids over there. They're not having kids over there, like, at all. Their birth rate is uh, the worst in the world, I think? I I I'm pretty sure. Uh, the, the, it's insane. 0 0.81, uh, births per woman in South Korea in 2021, and I believe it's gotten lower than that. South Korea has projected its fertility rate is likely to fall further to 0 0.68 in 2024. 0 0.68, good lord. That's like a third of replacement rate. At that rate, like, all, Korea is going to disappear in, in like, Two generations, basically. God damn. Yeah, here, you can see the world average and all these different lines. For the sixth consecutive year, South Korea has recorded the world's lowest fertility rate. That is wild. Yeah, North Korea is going to win the, the war. Uh, <laughs> purely by, like, replace. The great replacement is real, but specifically in the context of North Korea and South Korea. You know, they're just, they're simply going to overwhelm them population-wise. 2.1 is replacement rate. Yeah, this is this is pretty weird. This is pretty wacky. Uh, they're just not producing children. And over here, this is the tweet that I saw it from. The 4B movement in Korea, which is basically like, sure, Twitter, I didn't want to see that image anyway. Thank you, Twitter. Really appreciate you coming through for me there. The 4B movement is a feminist movement that originated in South Korea in 2019. The movement's members, or 4B, renounce four major activities, sex with men, child-rearing, dating men, and marriage with men. The 4B movement is also known as Bihon, Bi, Bi, Bichul, Bichulsan, Bi... It's 4Bs. That's why it's called the 4B movement. The refusal of heterosexual marriage, childbirth, romance, or sexual relationships. The movement represents a radical escalation of the gender war by seeking to create an online and offline world devoid of men. So this is, yeah, this is essentially just South Korea's, their own version of political lesbianism. Now, political lesbianism was very cringe, as far as I'm concerned, over here in America, because it's essentially just, yeah, women going their own way. You know how men going their own way, that like brief and kind of doomed political movement where men were like, women suck and marriage is a bad deal for men, so we're going to skedaddle, you know, and then those women will come crying back to us and then nothing actually happened. Political lesbianism was that, but in the opposite direction. It was very sad. You can look into its history. I don't really care for it. I don't think it's effective. I think it's mostly like kind of really pathetic, to be honest. Now, I do think there's a different context, typical male take, I know, right? There is a different context in South Korea, though. Now, I'm kind of painting with a broad brush because I'm not even remotely uh, an expert on South Korean cultural problems, but my understanding is that uh, over in South Korea, every man is Hitler. South Korean men have had a right-leaning turn in terms of misogyny specifically, because this is kind of a self-perpetuating cycle, right? The more unavailable women are, the more lonely and desperate men feel, which makes them more susceptible to like Andrew Tate-esque misogyny, you know? Wasn't this debunked? There was a broader like chart of multiple countries that was debunked by Soaked on Left a little while ago, but we're talking specific to South Korea, and this is definitely the case. You know, it, it's, it's like a self-perpetuating thing to a large extent. And from what I've heard, just anecdotally, men are wretched to women in South Korea. Like, the bitterness and entitlement and hatred that a lot of them express towards women is not even remotely coded. Like, it's it's a lot... Again, not all men, obviously. There are plenty of fine young men in South Korea. But this is definitely, like, a, a pronounced issue, you know? Uh, and it's gotten worse with time, and the birth rate has gotten lower, and relationships have gotten less frequent, and, uh, you know, so on and so forth, right? Hopefully the people who made uh, Lies of P got mad pussy, though, because that game rocked. I want to believe that in, in that specific, like, I'm, I'm rooting for those guys uh, and girls, you know. Is there any specific factor behind all this shit in Korea? Again, not an expert. I'm kind of speaking off the cuff here, but my understanding is that generally speaking, there is a broad tendency towards like uh, chauvinism in 
many places in that region. Japan has this issue. China has this issue. But like in South Korea, you have that along with like a dead or dying economy, along with crazy work hours, along with a history that does not um, romanticize gendered engagements in the same way. I think like Japan, as many issues as Japan has, I think there are some like cultural mainstays holding them up a little bit that South Korea might not have with regards to like chivalry or the innate value of like men and women being together. Basically what I'm saying, okay, what, I, what I'm saying is that South Korea has not had a Shinzo Abe telling them to breed, okay? That's what I'm saying. Good article? I love good articles. Feminists are protesting against the wave of anti-feminism that swept South Korea. Vosh, I was on a double date in South Korea and the guys my friend and I were meeting had intense creepy vibes. That's unfortunate. It doesn't help that their conscription policy drives a huge push to misogyny because women don't have an obligation to the military, whereas men do, and men value it as some kind of rite of passage. Anti-feminist wave that has swept uh, a big part of the historical issues arranged marriages. I'm sure there's a lot that's like so complicated, I, I would need to like really look into it. But whatever the case may be, it is particularly bad in Korea right now. That is for sure. An administration fueling anti-feminist sentiment. Yoon won the presidency earlier this year on a platform accusing feminists of misandry and appealing to the young men who feel like they must bear the brunt of Korea's growing in economic insecurity and shrinking job market. Oh, this probably isn't helping. Policies meant to increase economic opportunity for women and close the gender pay gap have fueled young men's resentment towards women. Anti-feminist, one YouTube channel with more than a half million subscribers, uploads videos that target feminists as mentally ill radicals who promote female chauvinism. Yun has continued to push his anti-feminist agenda in recent months, insisting he will follow through with his campaign plan to abolish the Ministry of Gender Equality and Family. Afuera! Yoon blamed the ministry's officials for treating men like potential sex criminals and escalating gender inequality. Man, the culture war really is global, huh? It really is, like, the same shit everywhere. What it's like to be a woman in South Korea. The gender pay gap in South Korea was 31%! Holy shit! More than double the OECD average of about 12%. Jesus Christ! Choose between career and family. Strict maternal leave policies at workplaces are among one of the reasons for South Korea's alarmingly low fertility rate. Women are held to a beauty standard many believe to be unfair and inappropriate. Yeah, I gotta say, um, we're gonna talk about this a little bit more in a second, but my understanding is that they are insane about beauty standards in South Korea. Like, really, really bad and wild. Like, uh, like I know more about how it is in Japan, but it's worse than Japan, you know? It's, it, yeah. I think K-pop contributes to this to a large extent. You wonder why K-pop is so popular, right? You know, all those idols? I think that a lot of that, yeah. They escape the corset movement 2019, a rejection of standards of beauty and conforming, da da da. In the Tokyo Olympics in 2021, South Korean archer An San, who won three gold medals at Tokyo, I remember that, became the target of online abuse from anti-feminists who claimed her hairstyle indicated she was a radical feminist. Ah, classic. Femi, short for feminist, has become a derogatory label for any person who speaks up about gender dis- Yeah, that all about tracks. It's, uh, it's not good. How do you even deal with this scale of brain rot? Well, the funny thing is, like, we're actually seeing something that's pretty close to what the far right describes as civilizational death, and it's being caused by, uh, misogyny, you know? One thing that I'm reminded of here is a misogynist, like etymologically speaking, the term arose from an era where being sexist was not considered to be bad. Like, if you think about the term misogyny, do you think that if you take that back to its root word like five trillion years ago, it was like, th they, it was like a, a pejorative to be sexist? What a misogynist referred to was a man who was so over the top and embarrassing in their in their sexism that it was like uh, an embarrassment. It, it emasculated them, you know? It was misogyny described not the belief that women were inferior, which was almost universally held, but rather the embarrassing, cringy overemphasization of that belief, you know? Like the difference between a person being kind of calmly, passively uh, sexist and a person being actively resentful towards women, you know? Think about like a stereotypical like 1950s guy, right? The average guy in the 50s probably did think less of women in some kind of way, but even back then, you would be considered uh, sort of like pathetic if you as a guy were like berating your wife in public or saying like, nah, men do this, women do that, come on, like being really weird about it. Yeah, it's it's like incel shit, basically. Yeah, literally. Like if you, the root of the word misogyny goes back essentially to accusing people of like kind of acting like incels, you know? 
be casual about it. Don't be overly invested in it. The funny thing is, it seems like South Korean men are being misogynistic in like the classical definition. Civilizations can rise in spite of widespread misogyny, right? But what's, what South Korea is doing is expressing it to a degree of self-destruction. It's not even about equality anymore, right? It's about like men are being so repellent, they are literally like not having kids anymore. They're all, they're literally like destroying the, the bedrock of civilizational stability, which is a stable birth rate. They're destroying that purely because they're so repellent to women that they're not like even, you can have a high birth rate in a sexist society. Many such cases. It's pretty weird. Korean Gamergate that gave insight into the whole stuff article. Gamergate was a uh, global. Okay. By the way, here's the radical haircut. So she literally just had like a short, short hair and that's it. Okay. It does look like she cut it herself with scissors. You know what, if you win three gold medals at the Olympics, I think you're allowed to give yourself a bad haircut. I think that should be allowed personally. So South Korea seems like it's kind of like careening towards oblivion because the men are so repellent that women don't want to spend time with them. Okay, fine. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, fan service. You know, I myself not being a... Um, oh, some of you know where this is going. I, I myself not being, a, you know, a, a, a resident of South Korea, or as a matter of fact, Japan, you know, I'm kind of, um, I'm kind of, uh, you know, looking in through the, through the glass here, right? But uh, something that I've noticed as somebody who plays foreign video games, as do we all, is that there is a weirdly high number of, how do I put this? Games from any country can have fan service, and that's fine. But for some reason, that shit gets really weird when it's from Korea. Stellar Blade is a game that I think is coming out soon that has been marketing itself almost entirely off of how it's defeating the woke feminist agenda by having every female character be a glistening skin suit stall. Uh, now, as somebody who has nothing fundamentally against glistening skin suit sex dolls, the only vibe that I really get from games that are built to look like this is those like, Try not to come in 20 seconds games. Like, are you playing a, like, come on, you know? Like, Bayonetta is heavily sexualized, but it's all done in a kind of like stylistic and narratively coherent way. I think like, this is literally like, like, it, I'll put it this way. If the character walking up the ladder was supposed to be some kind of like Aphrodite sex goddess who's descended to earth to beat a bunch of demons. Okay, fine. I think she's literally just supposed to be like a chick doing stuff. And she just looks like this, you know? It's just weird. It makes me feel like I'm, I'm, I'm playing a gooner game, you know? I feel like in comparison, I could like, I could artistically justify a lot of the weirder fan y stuff, even from like near Automata, you know? Because at least there was like a, a kind of artistic through line there and the game was designed in such a way that you could like, you could like play near Automata and think, okay, like I understand this as an aesthetic whole. Uh, W-H-O-L-E. You know what I mean. Uh, I can understand this like as a cohesive work of art. It doesn't really feel like those you 20 seconds to come games, if that makes any sense, you know? I'm asking you guys, I didn't bother to like go up and look, uh, look, look for a bunch of evidence or whatever, but like, do you agree with me when you say that to those of you who know, I don't want a bunch of no answers from people who have no f clue what this is about, there are a weird number of games from South Korea that have this like bimbo sex doll, like glistening ass titty from South Korea specifically. Like, there's a lot of it from Japan. Lord knows we've blamed Japan for this in the past, but South Korea has, like, a very weird, specific, you know, I'm, okay, I'm glad you, you agree, because I've noticed this plenty. And a lot of these um, GIFs and character designs and, like, show, show Nikkei, if you want a strong example. Oh, boy. Goddess of Victory, Nikkei. I, I don't know, I don't know about this one. Here's the first screenshot that I found from Google. Yeah, that about tracks, I'd say. It's not just about fan service. It's like the cringy blend of of fan service and like self serious, like a bunch of girls going to war stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Kung Tai Kim is rather prolific. Is that a is that a, a studio that makes a lot of the stuff? I'm sure we could find examples to support the point over and over again. Again, not anti fan service at all. I love Nier Automata. Okay, it's more like the no. There's no artistry in it. You know, it's uh, like I've. Uh, how do I put this? You can say some sussy shit if it's part of a good joke, right? If a person says something that's kind of problematic on a racial or gender or like transgender or whatever line, if it's a funny joke, I'll like, like, I think you can get away with it because the point was the comedy. 
But if you're saying racist shit and there's no comedy, the only reason you'd be saying it is for the racism, right? In the same way, you can include fan service in a way that feels like cool, interesting, artistically cohesive, empowering, or just like titillating in an artistically engaged way, and all of that's fine and that works. But then like, you can also include fan service in a way that feels like it was specifically meant to appeal to like, incels. For a perfect example of this, you can go on Twitter right now and find a bunch of right-wingers saying, look, South Korea knows how to depict women. If Western game studios were making this, you know, then they would all be fat, ugly SJWs with colored hair, you know? Like, there's there's a bunch of discourse on it because, like, ah, this is how women should be depicted. You know, women as designed by studios coming from the country with the lowest birth rate on Earth. But the Game of the Year winner from 2023 was Baldur's Gate 3, a game where you're not only constantly surrounded by beautiful women, but you can them and they get naked like full frontal you know so it doesn't seem like an abstention from nudity or even sexualization is really an issue with western studios it feels like a lot of right wingers over here in the west just like the fact that these women are being depicted as sex dolls or to put it another way i ask you to consider if there's no difference between this and any other fan service why does the right wing start salivating over stuff like this in a way that they don't for other developers and their games with their fan service. If there's no meaningful distinction between stuff like this and what you would see from like any other game that has fan service, like Baldur's Gate 3, where you can f the characters that you like, why does the right wing love this shit, you know? I hope you all get the point that I'm getting at here. What I'm saying is the reason why this stuff is so prolific from South Korea, I think, is for the same reasons they have such a low birth rate. I think that there's something innately degrading about the way these women are depicted that differs from regular fan service, which is why the right wing in the West likes it and why it comes out from places that have such issues with misogyny and like women not wanting to be around men. You understand? Witcher 3 had softcore scenes and nobody got on that. Yeah, because in The Witcher 3, the women you f are treated like human beings. They're not just glistening stalls. Hopefully all of this is making sense. There's some insane Chinese Gamergate shit happening with Girls Frontline 2 as well. Well, China also has an issue with this to a large extent, like everything that I'm describing here. Project Moon is a good example of a Korean dev that does not do this. You know, okay, wait, 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 wait. I, I, there are so many things to talk about here and I don't want to lose track. It's not like I have a script to work from here. I'm just trying to make a fundamental point. Yeah, Cyberpunk 2077 also has full frontal nudity, sex scenes, Witcher 3, likewise, uh, sex scenes, Baldur's Gate 3, full frontal, sex scenes. But people, because this is all Western devs, you know? But this all gets folded under the, like, uh, you know, oh, whatever category. I feel like one of the main reasons why Baldur's Gate 3 didn't get as much pushback from the right wing as, um, as people expected it to, because it's such an obviously left-leaning game, is largely because it was so good, it's hard to touch, you know? The Witcher 3, in a lot of ways, a clearly left-leaning game. Seriously, like, play it, keep an ear to the ground, you'll understand. It's very difficult to strike against it because, again, phenomenal game. What are you going to do? Make a culture war out of fighting that? Are you f kidding me? The Witcher 3? Uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Obviously a left-leaning game. You'd have to be an idiot to not understand where that game's politics come from. Uh, are you going to strike against that? Well, they did because it released in a buggy unfinished state, sure. But, like, in the politics sense, like, what are you going to do, right? There was a whole thing about a pinch gesture in South Korea where incels are canceling companies if a female character shows a pinching gesture. They interpret it as the girl saying their dick is small. Wow, that is the most self-indicting insecurity imaginable. Can you, why would anyone project that hard? Are you kidding me? Are you serious? Is this real? The, the projection, unbelievable. I, I, I didn't know whether or not I should talk about this, but like a huge part of the incel bullshit coming from South Korea is that they, along with Asian men in general, are kind of like the global punching bag for small dick jokes. I Any consistent data that I've ever seen on like average dick size per country is A, unreliable because different standards of measurement are used in different countries and also sometimes the collection is suspect in itself and B, marginal, not a big deal. The inciting pinch poster. How f do you have to be as a guy? Wait, this? Because it's a sausage? It's camping, what? Okay, I can't believe this emotional camping must have sausage item thing is attacking men or whatever. I don't know. That's weird. Thank you. This is shocking levels of insecurity. Yeah. 
I don't want to visit South Korea because I'm worried that as a six foot two, uh, broad shouldered white man, I, I would be like stabbed to death by 50, uh, you know, gibbering incels who, who assume, uh, you know, that, that I'm like, that, that I would height mog. Yeah. South Korean incels think that every major company is overrun by SJW feminists. Literally the exact same thing is over here, right? So they look to this stuff to accuse companies of being invested by feminists. It's just Gamergate shit. It's all the same. It's literally the same culture war all, all over the place. Every single time. They literally did the thing that you said about if the West made Stella Blade. Oh yeah, I saw this. This person, I think the, I think the person like removed their tweet or something. They, they posted an, a photoshopped image of like a fat girl. And it was like, if IGN made Stella Blade, to which, you know, name me one mainstream video game with a fat woman protagonist. And yeah, good luck with that one. AI generated, actually. Oh, whatever. Here it is screenshotted. That's true, man. Western game devs are always making characters that look like this, uh, their protagonists. This happens all the time, you know? That's so true. I can remember literally millions of examples of that, of this happening. OP's barely disguised fetish. Yeah, seriously. No kidding. Why would IGN make a game? They don't know. They don't know. They have no idea. Literally. Yeah. Like IGN, the, the review company. What do you mean? It's like, yeah, look, like IGN, like are, they, they don't design games. Why would they? If Ep Xbox made a game, the little dick pinching thing is so f wild, man. This is one of the most egregious examples of harassing companies into changing stuff because of the hand gesture. Well, no way. For those wondering about the Star Sung art hotfix. In the what? Th th that? It's a guy. It's not even a girl. It they go through media frame by frame to look for resting positions of the hands to freak out about. So what I'm what I'm learning from this is that if you're ever arguing with like a misogynist South Korean guy, all you have to do is post like the this, like a drawing of that, and and they just like they'll explode. I like remarkable. Not the goddamn gesture again. What was the first incident with the hand sign? It was a scene where Yi Sang picks up the ampule. So they had to do this before in a scene where somebody picks something up. This also enraged people. This? Pray tell, why would this enrage? Why? The th holding? Okay, I don't know. Anyway, my conclusion from all of this is that South Korea deserves to sink into the sea uh, or alternatively be reconquered by North Korea. Uh, what, whatever is going on in North Korea, it can't be this bad. Okay, you're you're all you. It's 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 time for one Korea, but the other guys win. Link to context. This is this is wild to think about. Like the the level of pr projected insecurity. Korean brands remove ads featuring this hand gesture after men's rights activists complain it's anti-male. Like in genuinely, like the projection necessary. Just any 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 the fingers together. According to activists, the hand gesture represents making fun of a small penis, aka its misandry. The movement blew up on the internet on May 13th when Korean YouTube personality and well-known feminist JJ ate a piece of chocolate at the Baek Sang Arts Award red carpet while posing for photos. The men's rights activist took serious umbrage at the way she held up the piece of chocolate, claiming the star knew exactly what the hand symbol, hand gesture symbolized. A petition to ban her from TV, 82,000 signatures. Convenience store chain GS25, fried chicken chains BBQ, BBQ and Kyochan online fashion store removed their ads and issued apologies over use of the hand gesture. Why are you kowtowing to this? Are you kidding? This? Just a person reaching for... Th yeah, this is just having opposable thumbs. It's how we evolved. Yeah, please. Please, Kim Dynasty. Please, Kim Dynasty. The, the people of South Korea uh, g call out to you. They beg for liberation. Yeah, this is worse than anything. This is unironically more pathetic than anything Gamergate did. Like, by far. Korean men are not well. Isn't Genshin Impact, uh, Chinese, not Korean? I think... Wait, is Genshin... Am I thinking of a different thing? Yeah, Genshin Impact's Chinese, not Korean. Though it is popular in Korea. Genshin Impact airship protest. This isn't helping stereotypes against Asian men. It's really not. No, it's it's really, really not at all. Not even a little bit. It's not helping. This ended up being a lot sadder than I thought it would be. I genuinely don't think the average North Korean is this delusional. No, genuinely, like, uh, the social situation in North Korea is probably better. Like, in terms of interpersonal social dynamics, it might actually be better than this. Like, uh, the South Koreans don't have a totalitarian government. So what we need to do is mix the... 
Okay, in fairness, the South Korean government also isn't very democratic, so whatever. We need to we need to make we we need slight democracy mixed with not hating women more than anyone has ever hated women ever in all of human history. And if we can merge those two things, we can have a functional one Korea. I believe the Korea protest for Genshin is because one of the five-star premium characters is a femboyish Lenny. You know, in a way, I feel like this masculine insecurity from Korean men is kind of like a different version of the racialized bias that we see uh, in colorism and advertising in like African countries or in India, where skin whitening procedures are common there uh, because the beauty standard is globally determined by whoever has the biggest, you know, the biggest wallets and we have the biggest wallets. So Western media propagates everywhere. So people see that as the standard for beauty. So Indian women will lighten their skin and like uh, Japanese women will get like the double eyelid surgery or whatever. And South Korean men will think like, oh, in the global like hierarchy of dick size, like we're considered the lowest. So therefore, like, you know, we're projecting this problem or this insecurity. It's pretty weird. Gotta say. South Korea is giga colorist too. Yeah, I mean, Japan is as well. I guess they share that at least. But yeah. Look at how light-skinned this Indian group is. This is an Indian group? Good lord. Thank- man, I'm glad- Look, America has its problems, you know? But I'm glad we don't have, like, this version of this specific problem, you know? Like, when black people appear in media, they're- they're not, like- They- they didn't get- they didn't get, like, white paint sprayed before all- Sometimes that does happen, but we don't have this level of that problem. Jesus Christ. You- you can link it, Autistic Chatter. You're really living up to your name. But I'm not going over it right now. What level of racism is this? I don't, I don't know. Indians are literally that light-skinned. I mean, some of them are, yeah. Skin bleaching is still insane to me. Like, it is, is it actually what it sounds like? Yeah, pretty much. Korean Maple Story fans rebelled when a character did a pinching hand gesture for two seconds in an animation because it was making fun of small dicks, apparently, and the company kowtowed to them. Man, Jesus Christ. Imagine looking at this, like, magical girl, lollycon, chibi, whatever the f And that, let me, let me zoom in on the three pixels there. Maybe the fact that it's such a tiny gesture makes it more of an insult because the dick must be truly minuscule for this to be descriptive of it. This is like psychosis, yeah. Like genuine mental illness, you know? Honestly, gotta say, I support the 4B movement in Korea. I support political lesbianism. The impression that I am getting of South Korean men, especially young South Korean men, the kind of people who would play Stellar Blade or Genshin Impact or Maple Story or whatever the f else, I don't think they're worth their time. At all. Uh, I Like, even a little, you know? I support it, okay? All of you, be lesbian. Go forth. Why are they feeding the small dick stereotype narrative? Yeah, it's really, really pathetic. They're like, they're not helping the situation for themselves, you know? The insecurity is weird, hot take, but having a small pee, -pee is fine. Yeah, I, I know. N nothing that I've said even remotely contests that. We're not talking about dick sizes here. We're talking about this, like, psychosis that's, that's gripped the minds of this incel movement. There's a Reddit post explaining this Maple Story situation for proof. Oh, I believe you. At this point, I'll believe you for anything. You know, anything, anything in this vein. In the new Angelic Buster music video, it was alleged that the lead animator that worked in the animation was tied to radical feminist ideology. Ah, Hamas? Hamas? As far as I can tell, it is a form of extreme feminism, and the movement uses this as a gesture to belittle men about their penis size. Okay. It was shown that in the AB video, Angelic Buster did the same hand gesture. Some of these seem like a stretch, but that is what the KMS community is alleging. Korean Maple Story. Mushroom Game Fun. Back to Mushroom Game. This is one of the most goofy controversies I've seen involving video games in a minute. This feels like the OK sign turning into white power shit all over again. Yeah, except, you know, the Christchurch shooter actually did make that gesture and it was promoted by people on the right. How do we get here? I don't know. Maybe the devs of a lolly game deserve this. Uh, I, I don't think Maple Story is actually pedophile. Well, Maple Story is just all chibi, right? They're just all like little chibi baby things or whatever. I don't know. I've never played Maple Story, but it's been around for like five million years. Some feminists did make that sign though. Yeah, it's a pretty normal gesture to make. Like, okay, right? But honestly, like, I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't support body shaming generally. But considering the fact that the South Korean incels have effectively made this like their symbol, I don't give a shit if women in South Korea do it. If nothing else, they've demonstrated small dick energy like beyond the pale. So like, whatever, I don't give a shit. It's not literally about dick size. How could it be? They don't know the dick size of any individual weirdo incel. Yeah, they're psychic dick size. Wild.